Okay, I have some code here that's making a new hash set. A hash set is going to store stuff for us. This one's going to store strings for us, and it's going to allow us to keep track of whether or not we've added that string to the hash set or not. So here I'm adding bear, then zebra, then tiger, then bear. Since bear is already in there, it won't add a duplicate. And then we'll add orange and dog and zoo. Okay, the code's not very interesting because you're like, Colleen, it just adds this stuff. But we're going to use this in, as an example to talk about how the hash set actually does that. It's a library class. We're not going to look at its source code, but we're going to be able to understand what happens when we call add. Spoiler alert, it's going to call a method hash code on whatever we pass in. And sometimes I might call equals with that item that I'm adding and something else that's already in my hash set. So imagine I'm a hash set named folder and someone wants to add the string bear. So here's the string that I need to store, but I need a reliable way to remember where I put it. So I'll show you my strategy. First, I need to know what hash code returns for the string bear. Okay, so I'll use hash code, this hash code test class to figure out what hash code would return for the string bear. So I've got S is bear, and then I'm going to print out its hash code. So I'm going to run my code, and it says hash code of bear is this number. Remember, I want to store the string bear, but I need to remember where I put it. I have 10 folders, so I'll use the last digit of the hash code to decide what folder to put it in. And I could have used a different scheme as long as I was consistent. Okay, so I'm going to use that last digit. So I've got my file folders here and I've numbered them 0 through 9. So that first thing that I was adding was bear. And the last digit in the hash code of bear was 8. So I want to put that in file folder 8. But first I have to make sure that there's nothing inside 8 already. And I check it and it's empty. So I'm able to add bear. Uh, I can put it back in there. Okay, next we're going to add zebra. Okay, and zebra, its hash code ended in a zero, so I want to put that in file folder zero. So I pull out file folder zero, make sure that it's empty. It's empty so I can add in zebra. Okay, cool. Next one up is tiger. The last digit in the hash code of tiger was seven, so I'm going to put that in file folder seven. So I check file folder seven, it's empty, and I can put it in there. Next, I wanna add bear again. Okay, well, you and I know that we're adding bear again, but I look at the hash code of bear. The last digit is an eight, so I know that I wanna put it in file folder eight. And when I open up file folder eight, I've already got a bear in there. So now I have two items in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call dot equals so that I make sure that I don't accidentally add a second bear. I find that they are dot equals, so these two strings are the same, so I'm not gonna add my new one in there. It's a hash set, so I don't wanna keep copies. I just wanna know that I've seen bear once. Okay, next up, I wanna add the string orange. The last digit in the hash code of orange was two. So I'm gonna to go to file folder two, I pull it out, Oh, and it's empty, so I can just add orange in there. Okay. All right, the next one that I wanna add is dog. The hash code of dog ends in two, so I'm gonna to go to file folder two, but when I pull out file folder two, you're not surprised that I already have an item in there. And so before I add my new item, and that new item is the dog, I need to make sure that these aren't dot equals. Okay, they're not dot equals, so I'm gonna keep both of them. So both of them are gonna go in file folder two. And I put file folder two back on it. Okay, next up, I wanna add the word zoo. The last digit in the hash code for zoo is two. So I'm gonna to go to bucket two, cause that's where I would have put it if I had already seen it. And I'm gonna to have to go and compare zoo to orange to see if those are dot equals. Okay, cool, they're not. And then I have to do zoo and dog to compare that those aren't dot equals and they're not. Okay, so I get to add in my new word, which was zoo. And folder two is gonna have all three of those. So the big picture is that when I'm using a hash set to store things, the hash set is gonna call hash code on my object, just like how we called hash code on dog. And my hash set is gonna use that hash code value to figure out in what bucket or what folder should it store that value. But because we might have collisions, there might be multiple things in that bucket, just like I saw with index two, I also need to make sure that any object I'm trying to add also has a dot equals method. 
Okay, so with the dog, when I added that string, I needed to call hash code on it. So I need to make sure there's a hash code for that type of object. And I needed to call dot equals on it. And so I need to make sure that I provide a good dot equals method that's gonna work so that I can identify when there are duplicates. A lot of times when we talk about hash sets, we just say, or hash tables uh, in general, we just say, oh, well, you need to write a hash code method, you need to write a dot equals method, but hopefully this helps you see why we need those two things.